Hi, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Fine? Better for this morning, right? Are you full of energy to participate in all the, uh, let's say, special activities that we prepared for you today? Yes? Very good. Okay, are you happy to see that today we are going to be talking about uh, kids for a change? By the way, hold on a second. My name is Teresa Sequia. I am one of the consultants working for Cambridge University Press. I can see familiar faces here in the audience and some new faces as well. So welcome everybody to the session. Thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, I welcome everybody also who are watching us through uh, live streaming as well, all over Brazil, right? Uh, did you, what did you think about the title of my presentation? No kidding, teaching kids is serious business. It is serious business, right? Especially the ones who really are accustomed to teaching kids. And to prove that, we are going to start with a very serious activity, right? Okay, ta-da! This is a school bag. Very good, school bag, bag, school bag. This is a pencil, very good. And this is a? Pencil case. This is scissors. These are scissors, glue, book. What about this? It's a baby. A baby face, right? A baby face. Okay, so uh, you saw all the pictures, right? Can you recognize all these pictures in here? Can you all see these pictures? Okay, so let's start from the bottom. School bag, let's say them together. School bag, pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue, book, baby face. Let's try to speed up a little bit the, the face. School bag, pencil, pencil case. Stop. Okay, from the beginning. School bag, pencil, pencil case. Stop. Now, scissors, glue, book, baby face, together. Scissors, glue book, baby face. Okay, from the beginning. Uh, school bag, pencil, pencil case. Scissors, glue book, baby face. Very good, wonderful. A little faster, let's try. School bag, pencil, pencil case. Scissors, glue book, baby face. Very good. Now what I need, uh, I want you to get in groups of, uh, let's say, minimum of five, maximum of seven. Look around, uh, gather together. You, don't, you won't have to move places or anything. Just count and uh, let's say gather together in groups of minimum of five, maximum of seven. You don't have to move chairs. You're not going to do anything really, really special, right? You don't have to move around. What I want you to decide is who is going to be number one, two, three, four, up to seven? Okay? Decide. Yes? Okay? Okay, so let's get that straight. Numbers one, raise your hands. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. Okay, so what we are going to do is the following. Okay, uh, just follow me. I have number one is a school bag. Two, pencil case. So number one, who? Uh, what are you? School bag. Two, pencil. Uh, three, Four, five, six, seven. Very good. So now what I am going to do is to call out uh, the objects. And when you hear your names, you have to stand, okay? So are you ready? School bag. You don't have, you, you don't, don't sit down. Just stand, right? Uh, pencil, pencil case. Scissors, glue, book. Baby face, sit down. Now I'm gonna do this faster. School bag, pencil, pencil case. Scissors, glue book, baby face, sit down. Okay, <laughs> now again. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not going to get tired, are you? Okay, so again, school bag, pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue book, baby face, sit down. Very good. Now, can you follow me singing and standing up? Yes? One, two, three. School bag, pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue book, baby face, sit down. Okay, very good. Now, what about doing this with music? Isn't it a lot better? Let's try it. Pupils book, unit two, okay. exercise one. Listen and point, say the chant. Listen to the chant. <laughs> School bag, pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue book, baby face, sit down. Pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue, book, baby face, sit down. Now listen to the children and point at the pictures. School bag, pencil, pencil case, scissors, glue, book, baby face, sit down. too. Okay, so when we talk about kids, isn't it true that we always associate kids with having fun? Because we know for sure that children learn through play, and that's true. And maybe because of that, uh, people who really are not so accustomed to working with kids, they think it's not so hard to work with kids, considering that, for example, teenagers is a very difficult age target to work with, and uh, adults as well, but uh, working with kids is not as easy as it seems. Do you agree? Yes, definitely, right? So when I started this presentation, I started with a, with a noun, right? Kid. And we know that uh, especially the first meaning would be a young or a child, right? Uh, for example, informal for a child. But if we go further, we have kid as a verb to say something as a joke often making someone believe something that is not true. And if we go on, kid stuff, an activity or piece of work that is very easy. Wow. And then we have no kidding, used when you are surprised by what someone has just said, as if it weren't true, right? And in this case, is this really what happens when you are teaching kids, only having fun? No way, no kidding. Teaching kids is really serious business. And uh, it's interesting because uh, when we talk about EOT, English language teaching, a lot of words come to our minds. Even if you are not a teacher uh, that teaches kids, think of the words that I'm gonna show you. And I want you to raise your hand when you know that the great majority of teachers associate this word with teaching kids. For example, uh, grammar. Generally, we don't associate the idea of grammar with kids, isn't it true? What about assessment? What about interaction? Okay. What ab depending on the kind of interaction, right? If we're talking about speaking, for example, not as much, isn't it true? Learner training. Mm. Songs. Yes. <laughs> Thinking skills. Mm-hmm. Class planning, what about play, for sure. Class classroom management, <laughs> production, okay. Fun, definitely. Games, skills development, okay. TPR, definitely. Stories, okay. Learner independence. Meaningful context, mm. needs analysis. Mm. Okay, to tell the truth, this is true for any kind of age target that we work with when we are uh, talking about teaching a language to a uh, foreigner, let's say. It doesn't matter if it is a kid, a teenager, or an adult. But truth is, 
that we genuinely associate uh, songs, TPR stories, things that are fun with kids. And we disregard or kind of not take so much the other words into consideration. But all of them are involved in the teaching of kids as well. Don't you agree? So today, what I decided to do is to gather, a, I mean, a lot of comments, a lot of ideas that we keep uh, hearing uh, uh, along the way about teaching kids that is not so hard or that it doesn't uh, require so much preparation. Now let's have a look at really what means to be teaching kids. Do you think that uh, because generally we work a lot more on, uh, let's say, vocabulary, we don't need context that much as we do, for example, for uh, adults? Generally, I would say that some people might think so, but don't you agree that having a context like this to present new vocabularies is a lot different than simply having students repeat the words? You create a different reality for students, right? And you kind of call their attention to, uh, let's say, enter a new world. Because this is what we do. We open up a window or a door and we invite our students to come in. And this context, this meaningful context, has to be present in every single thing that you do with the kids. For example, when you present vocabulary. You can, of course, present vocabulary to students in any way you want. But having something that they can look at and relate to when they are working with the vocabulary helps them remember vocabulary a lot better, right? And uh, it's not just a matter of teaching vocabulary, right? Because they have to understand meaning, and they have to be able to remember this meaning later on. Isn't it true? And we keep talking about repetition, exposure, and that means that students have to be exposed to a lot of content a lot of times. So I will stand here and I will say, book, 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 book. So I'm gonna stop before you kill me, right? Okay, <laughs> but let's do this, let's do this. Let's do this with this chant. I would say a table, uh, sorry, a pencil, a book, an eraser, a pen, a table, a chair. Say it again. Can you uh, say that together with me? A pencil, a book, an eraser, a pen, a table, a chair. Say it again. Very good. Okay, now we are going to have a deal, okay? I am going to play the audio. You are going to chant with the audio. Now, when the audio stops, you can't stop. You have to continue chanting until I say stop. Agreed? Well, you, I might, uh, let's say, ask you to continue doing this for five minutes, for example, but you can't stop. Promise? Yes? Okay. So you start with the audio. When the audio stops, you continue. Pupils book. Okay. Unit two, page nine. Three. Okay for you? Say the chant. Oh, A book, an eraser, a pen, a table, a chair, say it again. A pencil, a book, an eraser, a pen, a table, a chair, say it again. Very good, wonderful. <laughs> now, some people will remember the chant because of the sound. Some of them will remember because of the visuals, right? 
some of them will remember because of the words, the words, the way they are being presented. So we, in this way, we uh, are able to get to different types of learner, learners with different types of learning strategies. And by, uh, let's say, putting together all different styles or different intelligences, we are able to make them store this information a lot better than the others uh, with other types of activities. Uh, how many times did you repeat, for example, pencil or table or whatever? So when we talk about context and meaningful context, this is what we are talking about. When you repeat and repeat all over and over again the same content, but students don't realize that. For them, it's something natural. It happens naturally, right? And exposure is being increased. Okay. Uh, well, I think that for the, the teacher sitting at the back of the room is going to be a little more different, uh, difficult to, to see. But uh, I'm going to point to the animals. Let's see if you can spot them and say the names of the animals. Here. Okay, because you have to join the dots, I want you to copy the animals and uh, follow the audio, right? And of course, I'm kidding. I would never <laughs> ask you to do something like this. But because we won't be able to do this on the book, what I want you to do is to point to the cat and follow the audio, right? So if the audio says bird, you have to go down. If it says hippo, which is probably what it's going to be, uh, wha what the audio is going to say, you just trace your finger into the direction of the animal that is being mentioned next. All right, are you ready? Activity book, unit seven, okay, let me see page 40. Pointing at the cat. One, yes. listen and join the dots. Cat. Hippo. Snake. Dog. Fish. Tiger. Horse. Mouse. Elephant. Bird. Bat. Crocodile. Penguin. Giraffe. Monkey. Fish. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I hope you don't hate me. Um, I mean, uh, up to now, right? Because I know that some of you were almost, it's like uh, your arm were, uh, was, uh, let's say, weighing a uh, ton, right? Or something like this. But uh, isn't it interesting, the kind of activity that we see here? If you look at this, instead of having, for example, numbers, we have animals in this case, right? So if we look at this from the point of view of a student, it's a... Uh, a simple exercise where he's going to join the dots. But from the point of view of a teacher, we can see a lot of things. For example, I can see here the linguistic intelligence being worked with, right? Because we have vocabulary. But we also have the visual one, right? Because instead of having words, we have the animals. And students, they have to know the meaning of the, I mean, they have to recognize the animals and they have to be able to to spot the words uh, in English and they have to be able to hear it. So the musical intelligence uh, as well. And one intelligence that uh, you really, really exercise right now, which is the kinesthetic one. So you see, through one single activity, you can put together a lot of different elements in order to practice the language. And uh, does that sound uh, familiar? And of course, when kids are very, very young, the younger they are, 
easier it is to work with different types of intelligences because they are uh, developing them, all of them, right at the same time, right? And uh, chances are, if they go through activities that are enjoyable, they will tend to favor uh, some of the intelligences a lot more than they would if they weren't working with these activities, right? So Inácio Estrada says something very, very interesting. He says, if a child can learn the way we teach, maybe we should teach the way they learn, isn't it? This is a lesson for a teacher, right? Because it's not the way we like to teach, but the way it will be better for our students. Okay, so look at this. This is a grammar lesson, do you agree? So we have here, how many are there? There is or there are tarana in this room, for example. So here we have uh, uh, there to be, right? Okay, and here we have a song. And Jeremy say, well, you know, with kids you sing so many songs, but it don't really actually work, right? You don't simply have fun by singing songs. So let's have a look at this and let's see how important visuals are for students. And not only for uh, kids, but for students in general, right? What can you see there? Can you see pencils? Are there pencils in this picture? So I would say that there are pencils in this classroom or in the classroom. Yes, there are, right? Okay, there's a cupboard on the pencils. Yes, there is, very good. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. And there's a teacher on the bookcase. Yes, there is. Okay, very good. So from the beginning, there are pencils in the classroom. Yes, there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils. Yes, there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase. Yes, there is. Do you think you can follow me? from, I mean, uh, by describing the picture together with me? Okay, so there are pencils in the classroom. Yes, there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils. Yes, there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. There, there's a teacher on the bookcase. Yes, there is. Okay, what if we speed up a little bit the, the rhythm? <laughs> okay, there are pencils in the classroom. Yes, there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes, there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes, there is. Okay, once more without stopping, because I do too, because it's not that easy, right? Okay, so from the beginning, there are pencils in the classroom, yes, there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes, there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase. Yes, there is. Now, without stopping, okay? One, two, three. There are pencils in the classroom. Yes, there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils. Yes, there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard. There's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase. Yes, there is. What if we add rhythm now? There are pencils in the classroom, yes there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard, there's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes there is. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes there is. Okay, now we are going to stand up. And since my voice is not that good, right, or not good at all, I am going to play the audio, right? Pupils book, unit two, page 11. Is Seven, sound okay listen at the back and point. The room, yes? okay. Sing. There are pencils in the classroom, yes there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes there is. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes there is. There are pencils in the classroom, yes there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard, there's a bookcase on the ruler. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes there is. There's a teacher on the bookcase, yes there is. There are 
are pencils in the classroom, yes there are. There's a cupboard on the pencils, yes there is. There's a ruler on the cupboard, there's a bookcase on the ruler, there's a t-shirt on the bookcase, yes there is. <laughs> there's a t-shirt on the bookcase, yes there is. Okay, I am going to stop the there are pencils. But I think that by now you are already very, very accustomed to the song and to the rhythm, right? So what we are going to do now is we are going to start singing normally, but we are going to speed up the pace until we can. I mean, as much as we can, okay? So let's see how fast we can sing the song. Are you with me in this? Yes? One, two, three. There are pencils in the classroom. Yes, there are. There is passive. There's a pencils in the classroom. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Wow, gosh. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not like a tongue twister, but it looks like a tongue twister. Now, imagine, what if I asked you to sing again, would you, without the picture? Aha. Uh -huh. So you see, when we say that uh, visuals are important for kids, well, they're important for all students. Because uh, when I was doing this, the, you were singing, but you were being guided by the images you were looking at, right? So uh, basically, I keep saying that uh, you can bring all the visuals you can into the classroom, and they are going to be very, very important for your students. But you have to be able to exploit, and not only exploit, but to give students the opportunity of really, really using the language that is there and having fun with it. That's the, the best secret of it all, right? That serious business is really, really uh, playing or having fun as well, right? What about grammar? We don't have grammar for kids. Of course we do, right? But the thing is that we don't give names to the sentences, but we work with grammar as much as we do with teens or adults. For example, look at this picture. We have three people in here. We have Mark, Tony and Lynn, and they have different things in their baskets, right? So for example, Mark has what? Chicken and sausages and bread. Here Tony has apples and cake, and a cake, right? And Lynn, carrots, chicken, and bananas. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to look at the picture. I'm going to be very cruel. I'm not going to give you a lot of time. But now, let's see if you can take a guess. Mark says, I've got 11 sausages in my basket. Now, are you sure? Yes? OK, Tony, I've got 14 apples in my basket. Mm. Well, Lynn says, I haven't got any bananas in my basket. No? How many does she have? Two? Two? Okay. Uh, I've got chicken in my basket, uh, says Mark. Yes? Okay. I've got cheese. I've got a cheese sandwich in my basket. No? But I saw bread there. Are you sure? Ah, uh, it's another uh, guy, right? Lynn says, I've got 12 carrots in my, in my basket. True? Uh, really? You counted? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, but it's really, really difficult, right? Because in this case, that's the difference from kids, teens, and adults. Kids, they need the visuals in order to be able to kind of cross, uh, make a cross-reference between data. So in this case, we put both together. 
Because then when you say, I've got 11 sausages in my basket, I bet some of you are going to count, right? Because we want to make sure it's really correct or not. But isn't it true that it is really a grammar exercise? But the thing is that the students are going to use it as this, as if it were simply a language activity. And they will use this structure as a way, uh, as uh, for example, uh, uh, if they want to say or uh, give an idea, they are going to use language as functions, right? And uh, the most important thing is really not the structures, the verb or the nouns, but the meaning they carry. And uh, by getting accustomed to these meanings, later on they're going to, it's going to be a lot better or a lot easier for them to understand or to uh, learn grammar eventually, right? Later. And uh, here we are working, of course, in this case, uh, with the input, but later on we can do what? We can personalize. So personalization, but isn't it something that we use when we talk about kids and adults? No, we personalize with kids as well. We make them think and we make them use the language and we make them uh, not only use the language, but they express themselves using the language they are learning, right? So it doesn't matter the age target. Uh, because we are talking about um, expressing ourselves, what about a speaking activity? But then you're going to say, speaking activities uh, for students that are so, so small or so young. Okay, what is she saying? Yes, she wants red, so probably she's saying, give me red, right? Can you, do you have something red? Can you show me something red? Okay, so you're going to say, here you are, right? Okay, give me red, give me red. Very good. Now, the ones who find red, just point and say, here, here you are. The ones who can find anything red around, no problem, because uh, there will be other colors, right? So give me red. Very good. G uh, okay, so give me yellow. Very good. Give me green. Give me blue. Very good. Give me black. Very good. Give me white. Now you're going to say, all right. Okay, all right. Right? Okay, so let's go uh, back. And I will ask the questions that you give me. You answer to me, right? So give me red. Give me yellow. Give me green. Give me blue. Give me black. Give me white. Yeah, all right, very good. But I want you to show me the things because I can't see any colors being shown, right? So give me red. Give me yellow. Give me green. Give me blue. Give me black. Give me white. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Okay, so I want you to do this again, but you're not going to talk to me. You're going to talk to this young lady, okay? Are you ready? Yes? And now you. Give me red. Give me yellow. Give me green. Give me blue. Give me black. Give me white. See this activity in different ways. For example, I can see different students holding different cards, so I can divide them into groups and say, "Give me red," and they'll say, "Here you are." Give me yellow. Here you are. Or they take turns. In this case, it's a very, very interesting activity for you to practice vocabulary but in a meaningful way. Because if you say, give me red, and the student shows blue, something is wrong with this, right? And you can repeat and repeat and repeat the same chant over and over again with this fresh feeling of something new. And they can create their own chants as well. Of course, it's a controlled uh, oral uh, activity. But again, it's uh, meaningful use of language, right? Because they are going to personalize the content. What about this, my pets? 
students are going to color the pets according to their own taste using their favorite colors. I decided to include this uh, activity in this presentation because I was talking to a teacher the other day and she said that she uh, conducted this activity with her students and it was amazing because this is the first part. The second part of the activity, they had to color the second uh, part of the exercise uh, using the colors, the favorite colors of the, their partners. And it's amazing because if uh, a partner would use something like uh, yellow, black, and uh, gray, they had to paint it exactly the way it was. And it's interesting because sometimes you have uh, students saying, well, but I don't want to paint it in uh, brown because I, I don't like brown. And then you go and say, well, look, this is your, these are your pets, and this is your friends. Now your pets, you paint it the way you want, and your friend's pets, they, uh, he can choose the color, right? So you're not only working on attitude, but you're also working with interaction, the interpersonal and interpersonal intelligence as well. And you see, this is, an interactive activity where students exchange impressions and emotions as well, right? So again, it doesn't matter if they are very, very small, they can express their opinions as well, right? Okay, and this is the whole activity. It seems very simple, but isn't it interesting how students take it so seriously sometimes because it has to do with what they like or not, right? Or dislike. And what about this one? For example, I am, uh, I chose uh, an animal, and you have to guess, right? For example, it's beautiful and orange, or it could be one of these two, right? Number two, the fish. Well, why not this one? Well, maybe because, well, do you all agree it's not beautiful? <laughs> okay. Okay, so when we talk about kids, isn't it true that we have the impression that they only imitate and repeat what we say? That they only or simply pa uh, parrot what uh, we teach them throughout the classes. But there's more uh, to it than pure or mere repetition, do you agree? Because when you have activities like these, for example, you are working with a context sometimes a different context. You are adding up a choice. They can choose whatever they want. You are adding a challenge to the activity, right? And you are setting a task that will require a go as, a, as a in the end. And because of that, they will have to communicate and communicate meaningfully, right? And that will all lead to an outcome right? Be it learning a little more, winning, or doing better next time. But if I look at this, isn't it the same thing that we do for adults or for teens? So again, it's so much work that we have to do, plus other, other things that we have to take into consideration. But uh, we have to be careful with games, don't we? This is, uh, well, this is uh, part of a comic strip from Calvin and Hobbes by Sam Watterson. Uh, he's one of my favorite cartoon uh, writers. And this is uh, Calvin talking to Hobbes, his imaginary friend. And he says, I'm thinking of a number between one and 700 billion. Try to guess it. 11? Nope. Guess again. Six million and four. And she says, nope. Guess again. Look at the <laughs> uh, Hobbes' face. And then he goes away, and Calvin gets very mad. What's the matter with you? Don't you like games? <laughs> so again, we have to know exactly what we are doing, right? Otherwise, we can lose our students. So simple games, games that are easy to set up, easy to accomplish tasks or goals that are easy to accomplish, right? Things that are easy to be understood, right? But not all games are so simple because in this case, a lot of background knowledge is involved, right? They have to kind of look back and try to remember something that has more or less the same shape before the drawing is being completed, right? So we're talking about thinking skills. 
this is also a game. And in this game, I have to guess uh, my partner's row of toys. So my question is, why would I ask a question such as, uh, have you got a black dog? Why would I ask a question like this? Because if I do, if I do, what happens? If I say no, I win the game. Do you agree? Yes, I, yes, I have that means I have three options. But if I uh, answer no, then I win the game. So what would be my next question in this case? Have you got a train? That's a, uh, another possibility. Have you got a ball, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we are teaching our students to think, right? Uh, so thinking skills, they are not born naturally, right? We have to uh, give students opportunities to develop that, no matter how young they are. So Socrates said, I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think. And this is what we do for all students. Why not with kids as well, right? OK. Uh, because time is short, I'm not going to uh, show you or uh, develop this activity. But you see here a house. How many rooms are there? Yes. OK, how many bedrooms? Can you see a kitchen? A dining room? A hall? Living room? Yes. Are they small or big? Small. Well, there is one big bedroom, right? And it is different from this one, right? Because here I have two floors. So what happens? I am exploiting the picture and calling students' attention to the differences between one room and the other. So I here, here I have number one, two options. Number three, uh, number two, two options. And number three, two options. What happens is I play the audio, and students are to listen to the explanation, uh, listen to a person describing his or her house, and choose, and they have to choose between uh, A or B what house is being described. So see, it's a listening comprehension exercise. And it's simple because it's based mainly on meaning and uh, the visual that we have here, right? And uh, we lead our students to think. And it's something very, sorry, which is something very important. And after all these examples, they can write about their own house as well, right? Because they have not only the vocabulary, but they have been exposed to the uh, listening as well. All right. What about reading? Reading is difficult, right? Uh -huh. OK, what can you see the, in this picture? Can you see a mirror? Where is the mirror? In the bathroom. Very good. Can you see a mat? For example, here, this is a mat. This mat is, so there's a mat in? In the bedroom. Very good. Uh, what about a sofa? Yes, in the living room. Can you see a clock? Yes, in the living room as well. So a sofa in the living room, and there is a clock on the on the wall. Very good. Can you see a bathtub? Yes. So there's a bath, and there is a boat, right? So there's a boat in the bath. What color is the boat? Red. Very good. Wonderful. Okay, so on and so forth. Have a look at this picture. For example, can you see a telephone? Is there a telephone? Yes. Where is the telephone? In the hall, right? And the lamp? Two, right? So there's a phone and a lamp in the hall. So have a look at this picture for 30 seconds. Ideally, I would give uh, you this activity together with a picture. But if I showed you the, um, the poem in here, you probably won't be able to see it at the back because the image is going to be very small. So I am going to take out the picture, and let's see if you can help me complete the sentences. So there's a mirror and a phone, a sofa. A clock, there's a lamp 
on the table, right? In a mat next to the bed, there's a, which is also right, right? There's a boat in the bed, and the boat is red. Let's read it together. There's a mirror in the bathroom and a phone in the hall, a sofa in the living room and a clock on the wall. There's a lamp on the table and a mat next to the bed. There's a boat in the bath and the boat is red. It's so important to work with visuals, right? And visuals are used for different uh, reasons or for different purposes. In this case, it's to help students read the text, right? In this case, it's a small poem. We start with a small poem and we go on and on and on, right? All right, uh, and here is the, uh, let's say, preceding exercise where we present not only the vocabulary, uh, the furniture, but also the different rooms, right? Okay, uh, okay, so what do you think about these characters? Are they nice? Okay, so what kind of animals do we have here? We have a monkey, a lion, a parrot, and a giraffe, right? So this is Leo, Leo the lion. We have uh, Mike, the monkey. We have Polly, the parrot. And Gina, the giraffe, very good. Okay, they are very, very good friends. But the thing is that they are very, very hungry. Very, very hungry indeed. Look, and uh, guess what? Polly brings soup. Well, is Polly hungry? Yes, yeah, she's hungry. And what about Mike? Is he uh, hungry? Yes. Gina is also hungry, right? Yes. And what about Leo? Is he hungry? No. He's not just hungry. He's very, very, very hungry. And when he sees the soup, he says, wow, it's my favorite. And guess what happens? He drinks a little and a little and a little and a little more. And then what happens? He has everything. Oh, that's not good, right? But Polly, no problem. She brings what? Sausages and fries. Wow. Everybody's hungry, right? And what about Leo? Leo is very, very hungry. And when he looks at the sausages and fries, he says, it's my favorite. Mm, does he share? Mm, let's see. He eats, he eats, and he eats it all. Look at his part and look at Gina's part. Poor thing, isn't it? But Polly has more food. Look at what she does. She brings apples. Now look at Leo's face. Why, is, why this face? Because he is hungry, very, very hungry. But now he shares, right? A little bit for everybody, yes? Yes or no? No. Oh, look, you look, you look at the way he divides the food, isn't it? Wow, <laughs> bad boy, isn't it? But it, does he eat it all? Yes? Yes, he eats everything. Oh, but now look, ice cream and cakes. And look at Leo's face. Well, I think he says, it's my favorite. Does he eat it all as well? No? Okay, so let's have a look and see what happens. and chips. My favorite! Mm, I'm 
hungry. Apples, my favorite. Mm, I'm hungry. at the situation they can relate to the characters into the situation of course uh, here we work with the um, here with values right with attitude things that they should or shouldn't do but uh, most of all we are also working with stories and stories they are very very important and we talk about stories we talk about beginning middle and end but there's a little more to it right and I uh, got a quote talking about stories from Herbert and he says first of all a story needs to engage a reader or a listener emotionally in order to do so it needs a clear beginning a setting the scene a middle part where things develop in an unexpected way leading to conflict and hence emotional engagement uh, and end where the conflict gets resolved and we can uh, sympathize with the characters as well right so the story only works if there is some kind of tension an unexpected turn a complication of the plot a surprise element or something that shocks the reader or listener making him uh, or her feel worried sad etc right and uh, stories especially if we're talking about kids we uh, are getting them accustomed to concentrate or focus on content for longer periods and we are preparing them to receive more input later on as well not to mention the level of exposure that that provides because we kept repeating, repeating, repeating the structures they were learning at that point, right? So when we talk about kids, what kind of development are we talking about? Because when we talk about adults or teens, basically we're talking about skills development in language, grammar and vocabulary, isn't it true? But when we talk about kids, isn't it true that we are also aiming at physical development? Because we can start working with students that are, let's say, uh, three, four years old, up to 10, uh, nine, 10 year old students that are also considered kids, primary level students, right? We also have to take into consideration the social development, the ability they have to interact with other people the emotional, uh, the emotional level of development as well, right? Different ages will provide you with different types of situations or different types of problems. And we also have the intellectual development. Uh, because of that, sometimes uh, parents, they say, wow, you worked with the colors last year. You're going to work with colors again? Okay, so this is how I would work with students that are six. And this is how I would work with the students that are seven. So totally different in terms of skills, in terms of challenge, in terms of input, right? So we have to take that into consideration that kids, they are being exposed to the language and being exposed, that means we are developing different skills with them, especially in, in the cognitive level, right? So for example, here is a very simple activity and you'll say, but that's very easy. Then I would say, for whom? What age, right? So here after that, I will have counting the shapes. So I present the shapes and I count the shapes, right? Like this. 
okay? We're not going to do this. This is just for you to have an idea. And what I want you to do is to compare it. Okay, so here closes the uh, lesson on shapes, right? Have a look at another lesson for older students, right? So here we have more shapes. And then we are going to work with 10 grams. It's a game, a Chinese uh, game, right? When you see different shapes and you have to count uh, the amount of shapes that we have, right? And you create different uh, drawings or different images by doing this, right? And this is uh, connected to 12, right? Because they are learning something else through English. And look at the level it can become. For example, students later on, they can draw their own shapes by using the the original ones, right? So one is totally different from the other, so we can compare because of the content that they provide, all right? Okay, in this case, look at the shape that they are able to do. Very, very interesting, right? Because the students then will use a lot of their creativity and self-expression in order to be able to do so. But kids are kids, and from another comic strip, in this case, we, are s we can see here uh, Calvin's parents, and he left Hobbes and he disappeared, right? And uh, the mother says, here's Hobbes, but where's Calvin? And then the father, I don't see him. And then he says, you stay here, uh, you stay here in case he comes back, and I'll go look for him. Okay. And then the father says, well, Calvin could go anywhere in the zoo, right? But look at what where he is. He is at the tiger's pit, right? And then the parent says, I know, maybe Calvin's at the tiger's pet since he likes tigers so much. And he goes there, no problem. But then all of a sudden he says, ha maybe Calvin's is in the tiger's pet since he likes tigers so much. And then -dum, he goes flying, right? So kids are like this, isn't it? So uh, although it seems so weird, somebody trying to do something crazy like this, they do, right? And because of that, we do a lot of work on different things. Values, for example, sharing, caring and sharing. We work on different values and we work with different things. For example, we, only, we are not going to teach only what is in the classroom, but we are going to work also on attitude, on things that they have to learn outside the room as well. And the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery as well. Because through uh, English, we can teach them a lot of different things, like this one, for example, right? Have you tried? It's really very nice. It's a very nice way of showing colors, because you can see the colors of the rainbow on the CD. It's very, very uh, interesting. Or when you start giving them more input and have them learn different things through English as well. So for example, these pictures are very beautiful, isn't it? And they start learning a little bit about animals and their uh, habits in terms of uh, uh, meals or places where they live, right? Okay. And this leads us to CLIO activities, right? Oh, right. What about this? Projects that they develop, right? Okay. Uh, so keep in mind, language learning is not just about languages. It's about how the brain remembers best, about content that appeals to the students. It's about helping students feel they can do it. And they can do it by doing something apart from what is being asked from them in the classroom. So teacher aim, teachers, they aim at study skills, discipline, commitment, responsibility, dedication, and independence because this will make them better learners for later stages, right? So assessment, revision, yes. After every unit through reviews, ongoing assessment through all types of activities that you conduct, self-assessment uh, self through, for example, ICAM boxes where when they realize what they are able to do, and at the end of the course, through certificates or even for uh, exams, right? We have now exams for young learners, young learners exams. So we have, for example, for very young learners, starters, movers, and flyers. And you say, well, probably we won't have anything to prepare them uh, for. But look, fun for, 
So students will learn, they will prepare for the test, but also taking into consideration their age target, working with sentences, working with stories, right? All right, so uh, Fred Rogers says, play is often talked about as if it were a relief from serious learning. But for children, play is serious learning. Play is really the work of childhood. And people who do not play, or children who do not play when they are kids, probably they won't grow as well as they should, right? Okay, very good. So, because time is up, I'm gonna rush, because there is another activity that I want to do. All activities, they were taken either from Kids Box second edition, the new book we have now, the new edition uh, coming out. We also, I also use uh, um, activities from Hippo, from Playway, from Kids Box, American English, and from Super Minds. Of course, here we have to take into account they are different um, series for different age targets. For example, we start from three up to six, and then uh, nine, ten, etc. Right? So be careful when you choose a book. Always take into account the age target, okay? Very good. Related titles, we have a lot of reference materials if you want to get to know a little bit more about teaching kids. Not only reference materials, but also photocopyable. Some of them also were taken from here, okay? And we also have uh, readers for different age targets. Because I have to rush, uh, I want to do something. Okay, can I divide this room into four different blocks? So I would say one, two, up to, up to here, okay? One and two, right? Three and four, okay? Right? Okay, one, raise your hands, twos, threes, fours. <laughs> okay, one, Two, three, four. Very good. Okay, so <laughs> let me sh uh, let me teach you a little song. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. Can you follow me? <laughs> Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. Again, come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. Okay, now number one, guess what? You are dogs. Okay, dogs do wolf together. Wolf. Cats do meow. Okay. Uh, sheep go ba. Right? And uh, cows do moo. Very good. Okay, so come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. Very good. Okay, so let's do the. Uh, when I do this, it means it's you. You, three, you, four. Can you all? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, you, 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 and you, right? So. Let's do the animal boogie, woof. Let's do the animal boogie, meow. Let's do the animal boogie, ba. Let's do the animal boogie, moo. Very good. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. Okay, now gets a little more difficult. Stay together with me. One, two, three, four, five, together. One, two, three, four, five, again. One, two, three, four, five. But the thing is, I'm going to say, I like dogs, oh, dogs are nice. Wolf, 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 right? Okay, so I like dogs, oh, dogs are nice. I like cats, oh, cats are nice. I like sheep, oh, sheep are nice. I like, I like cows, oh, cows are nice. Very good. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me, the animal boogie woogie. Okay. 
And I like the animal boogie too. Wolf, meow, ba, moo. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. And if I do this at the end, it means that you have to. Okay, you? Okay, now I want you to stand and let's sing the song together. One, two, three. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. I like the animal boogie. Wolf, I like the animal boogie. Meow, I like the animal boogie. I like the animal boogie. Moo, come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. I like dogs, oh, dogs are nice. I like cats, so oh, cats are nice. I like sheep, oh, sheep are nice. I like cows, oh, cows are nice. Come sing with me and dance with me for you and me. The animal boogie woogie. And I like the animal boogie too. Yes, come sing with me and dance with me for you and me, the animal boogie woogie. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you very much indeed. What a wonderful, wonderful. Well, they, <laughs> well, they got just in time for me to show the last quote. You have with kids, if you have built castles in the air, your work need not to be lost. There is where they should be. Now put foundations under it, right? So this is what we do with kids. Thank you so very much for the session. Well, what, you are a wonderful audience. Thank you so very much.